What's up guys? Welcome to our math lesson. Today we'll be learning about how to find uh, the six uh, trigonometric functions. Uh, this is our problem of the day. Problem reads, what are the next five trigonometric functions given sine 3 over 5? So what uh, uh, the trigonometric functions are, it's uh, sine, um, uh, is cosine, and tangent. You might be wondering what are the other three? It's the uh, the exact uh, the the opposite of sine, cosine, and tangent. So cosecant for sine, secant for cosine, and cotangent for tangent. Those would be the abbreviations. Um, so our problem says that we have sine is three over five. So we can automatically fill this in. Let me draw the right triangle for you real quick. On the right triangle. Uh, different sides have their different names so it would be um, so this one would be opposite this one would be adjacent this one is always a hypotenuse always no matter what no matter what problem you're doing this is always going to be the hypotenuse one way to kind of memorize where each um, where each number goes uh, we use this thing called Sokotoa so ka Toa, where the S represents the sine, C represents the cosine, and T represents the tangent. O and H, AH and OA, represent the different sides of the triangle. So for uh, so, it would be opposite over hypotenuse. For cosine, it'd be adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent would be opposite over adjacent. So now we can figure out where 3 over 5 goes, given that we have sine. So on sine, it says that we have opposite over hypotenuse. We have 3 over 5. So our opposite would be 3, and our hypotenuse would be 5. You might be wondering, how do we find out the missing side of the triangle? So what we do is that we use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side. The Pythagorean theorem looks like a squared plus b squared equals c squared. One thing to remember about the, about the Pythagorean theorem is that the hypotenuse is always going to be c squared. Again, no matter what, the hypotenuse will always be c squared. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you put the adjacent or the uh, or the uh, opposite uh, sides on the Pythagorean theorem as long as they're in there. So we have three squared plus b squared equals c squared. Notice that I'm using the three for the a. So three squared plus b squared, because that's our missing side, equals 5 squared. That's our hypotenuse. Then we solve 3 squared equals 9, plus b squared equals 5 squared equals 25. After we have gone to this, we subtract 9 on both sides. We isolate the b squared. b squared equals 25 minus 9 equals 16. And now, since it's b squared equals 16, the square root of 16 equals 4. So that's our missing side. All right, now that we have uh, our missing side done, we can now fill in the rest of the uh, trigonometric functions. So we have, uh, this is our hypotenuse again, this is our adjacent, and this is our opposite. For cosine, remember that we have Sokotoa, so uh, cosine would be equal adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So our adjacent is 4 over 5. Then we have tangent, so tangent would be opposite over adjacent, so opposite over adjacent, 3 over 4. Alright, now one thing to remember about these three is that this will always be the exact opposite of this. Always. So in this case, cosecant would be 5 over 3. Cosine would be 5 over 4 for, C, uh, for secant, right? Secant is the opposite of cosine, so it would be 5 over 4 instead of 4 over 5. And cotangent would be uh, 4 over 3 because it's 4 over 3. 
All right, and uh, now we have all our six trigonometric functions. I'm Jose. <laughs> okay, for this next problem, we're going to teach you how to rationalize uh, your answers. So, basically what we're, we have here is cosine theta 3 over 7. What is the cosine? 3 over 7 and finding the next five trigon trigonometric functions. So, basically what we're going to do is the same thing that we did for the previous question. So, we're going to write down sine, cosine, and tangent. So, right here, cosine is already a given, so that's going to be 3 over 7. So, with this given information, cosine, hold on, let's write down Sakatoa first. So, so, ka, to. So, from Jose, which he already explained, AH is adjacent. So adjacent and the hypotenuse. So three, seven. Now, to find the missing side, we do the Pythagorean theorem, which is uh, three squared plus uh, b squared equals seven squared. Which got rational, which uh, simplifies to nine plus b e squared equals forty nine. Now we minus nine for both sides. So b e squared equals forty. Now square rooting forty is not going to come out even. So what we're going to do is do this and leave it as this as b uh, b so we're going to put over here b square root of 40. now now we can fill in uh sine and tangent so uh for sine opposite over hypotenuse Forty um, square root of forty over seven, and for tangent is forty over three. Square root of forty over three. So now let's erase this over here and let's make some room to find to find a uh, cosecant. As Jose told you, you must flip it. Okay, so here you could leave it like this, but most mathematicians don't. So what we do here is rationalize. So what we do here, we times it by square root of 40. And that equals seven. Seven, four, uh, 40 square, uh, 40, square root of 40, 7 square root of 40 over 40. This is the way most mathematicians like to do their rationalizing. And so you do the same um, to tangent. Uh, cosine is okay because it doesn't have a square root as their um, num uh, denominator. So. Secant seven over three and cotangent. Let's see, let's work this out. Mm, three. I'm gonna show it to you like this. Times As you can see, rationalized because the square root of 40 was on the bottom. Most most mathematicians don't do that. So rationalized by timesing um, 
3 over square root of 40 by square root of 40. And you end up with this answer. This is the final answer. And that concludes rationalizing.